Week then lads and lasses, how we doing and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. In today's daily news video, we have news that Newcastle United are the latest club to express an interest in 24-year-old Canadian striker Jonathan David. You might know him from his predominant time over at League Unside, uh, Los Galil. He gets about a goal every two games. He could be Newcastle United's star Backup striker, uh, we'll touch upon him in just a second. He is a very great player. We also have news on who I would like to call the Deadwood uh, players of Newcastle United. They are a trio of Ryan Fraser, Jamal Lewis and Isaac Hayden. As all three players are set to leave Newcastle United. As one has agreed terms with the club. And one other player who was on loan at a club last season had the chance to sign them. And they actually have the club have turned it down. We'll speak about one player out of that three very individually because I'm so unhappy and so heartbroken that he didn't work in Newcastle United. But lastly, lads and lasses, before we start the video, there's one more thing we will touch upon. As the player, not do, he doesn't play for Newcastle United anymore, but he still lives very fondly in my heart. It's that man right there. By the way, if I pointed at Sanjo there, I didn't mean to. I'm obviously pointing at Alan St. Maximin. So without further ado, lads and lasses, if you do enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up button. And by the way, for some reason, yesterday's video didn't do as well as it normally does. And by the way, you absolutely smashed the like button. So YouTube might be playing up. Please, if you can, hit the like button so we can kind of get out of that algorithm zone, so to speak. Without further ado... Let's get into it. So let's start off with the Jonathan David news. You might know him if you are uh, of the younger generation or if you just play FIFA because Jonathan David always kind of has a special card on FIFA for some reason. It's been reported by Ben Jacobs that Newcastle United are the latest Premier League club to express an interest in 24-year-old Canadian striker Jonathan David. Other teams who are battling out uh, for the Canadian, of course one is Chelsea and the other is Tottenham Hotspur and uh, many other overseas teams are also tracking Jonathan David. The potential price tag of Jonathan David, who by the way has one year uh, left on his contract over at Los Galil, the potential price tag could be £25 million. Now of course Jonathan David has played in League 1 with Lille for four years now and in 146 games has scored seven 21 goals. That's just about a goal every two games. Uh, but of course, it is League 1. It's not the Premier League. It's not the best record for a league like League 1. But I must say, for a backup striker who scores about a goal every two games, it's not too shabby at all. Question is, would Jonathan David, who knows teams like Chelsea, teams like Tottenham Hotspur, and Italian and German teams who are interested in the Canadian striker, would he come to Newcastle United? Undoubtedly no one. He would be second string to Alexander Isak. Nobody on earth is getting in front of Alexander Isak. I genuinely don't think anyone on earth would in our team. But of course, the likes of the Dominic calvert Lewins, who we have been linked with, they fully well know they would be second string to Alexander Isak. Hence why they probably didn't want to come to the club. Kind of knowing, although they would get chances in cup games maybe, that they are getting an early retirement, so to speak. Moving on to that trio... Deadwood trio, uh, so to speak, and Ryan Fraser, Jamal Lewis, and Isaac Hayden, as we have quite a bit of transfer news on that trio. Starting off, as it's been reported by the Northern Echo, that Ryan Fraser has agreed personal terms with Southampton. Of course, that's where he spent last season at one loan. Southampton fans were quite impressed with Ryan Fraser. Southampton have indicated that they do want to sign uh, the Scotsman on a permanent deal, but as of recent, they've actually failed to agree deals with Newcastle United, but of course, they have agreed a deal with Ryan Fraser. Now, I'm just going to be honest. At all costs, just get Ryan Fraser off the wage books. £60,000 a week. He's costing Newcastle United, of course, if he wasn't to get a move, Southampton would have been paid uh, a little bit of his fee last season as he was on loan there but I've got to say although he's got one year left on his contract anything near 500 grand just snap the hands off not only does he get it uh, does he get off the wage books of Newcastle United but we'll get a little bit of money as well 500 grand even though that financial fair play deadline has went out the way it's not going to do a lot nevertheless let's get some money back for him because he was a free transfer would actually be getting a profit there moving on to Isaac Hayden uh, and Jamal Lewis as both players have have been listed up for sale. Lewis was on loan at Watford last season and yet again, just like Ryan Fraser, actually done quite well in the Championship last season. Nothing too spectacular, but still, Watford fans were 
highly impress uh, with the Northern Ireland International. But Watford, although doing quite well for them, have actually turned down the chance to sign Jamal Lewis. Looks like he's stuck in Newcastle United for yet another year, unless he goes back out on loan. Um, if none of the three players, and I do think this is quite harsh by the way, if none of these three players are sold, they will train and play. You guessed it, with the under-21 squad. Now look, if these players want to better their career, fair enough. If they just want to stay in your castle and uh, get the top money that our Premier League club plays them players, then look, they can go and play with the under-21s. But if they genuinely do want to move to a different club, I think sending them to the under-21s is actually quite harsh. But yet again, if they just want to pinch a wage off Newcastle, we're not having that attitude. Go and play with the under-21s. We've actually done that uh, with what Ryan Fraser recently. I remember him scoring on Harrison Ashby's debut, funnily enough, against Norwich. I think we won 3-2. God knows how I remember that. But uh, yes, I do think that is quite harsh. And one thing what actually really pains me, it's Jamal Lewis. When we signed him under Steve Bruce for £15 million, of course, under Mike Ashley as well, we didn't really chuck out that kind of money for players back then. And when he come to Newcastle United from that Norwich squad, he was bigged up to be a fantastic player. Of course, uh, to be a fantastic player in his career, not straight away. Even Liverpool wanted to sign the Northern Irish left-back. And I have got to say, he didn't turn out to be great at all. Even in pre-season last season, when he played against Rangers, he looked like an absolute ghost of a player and it makes me so sad as well, we don't know if it was an attitude problem, maybe just a potential problem, God knows what it was, but he definitely did not fulfil his potential at Newcastle United. Eddie Howe, if you can work one more wonder, although I do say that we've got about 15 options at left back now, just try and get Jamal Lewis a good career, because honestly, he was one of my favourite players when we signed him. I used to play with him on career mode all the time when he was playing for Norwich. Uh, Isaac Hayden, yet again, he was also one of my favourite players. Got stuck in every single tackle, although he was injured uh, quite a lot of the time. What a player he was, and he was never scared to fight for the badge. But lastly, lads and lasses, we'll quickly touch upon this. Alan St. Maximin, look, he's gone and I fully believe Alan St. Maximin leaving was the right choice for Newcastle United. We needed consistent wingers. As much as I love Maxi, I love his skills, I love his attitude, donating to the food bank, helping out sick kids in the hospital. He was an amazing guy. We can all agree on that. But as a player, very, very inconsistent. There's only one performance that lives fondly in the heart, apart from St. Maximin himself, eh, for me. And of course, it's that Manchester City game at St. James's Park. We needed consistent wingers like your Anthony Gordons, like like your Harvey Barnes, although he is injured quite a lot of the time. Alan St. Maximin, onto the news here, uh, has agreed to join Fenerbahce on a season-long loan, of course from his Saudi club, Al Ali. He will be playing under Jose Mourinho, don't know why I said Jose there, Jose Mourinho in the Champions League. Finally, this man gets to play in the Champions League and I honestly couldn't be any more buzzing from. Undoubtedly, and he always will be, one of my favourite ever Newcastle United players. He gets in the ranks of Alan St. Maximin, uh, Sandro Tonali, Ayose Perez, Isaac Hayden, Joe Willick, Lewis Hall. I don't know why Lewis Hall's there, by the way. And Tino as well. That's just something that's springing to mind. But Alan St. Maximin, from every single Jordy who loved you, at least I know there is a fair few out there that didn't like Alan St. Maximin. Look, we played absolutely terrible football. He was the only positive player we had probably in about half a decade. Best of luck, certainly from me, Maxi. Go and absolutely smash it, lad. There we have it, lads and lasses. Hope you all enjoyed today's YouTube video. So, of course, Please do hit the thumbs up button for some reason YouTube kind of what's the word shadow ban the last one I don't know why they did apparently they did though subscribe if you are new and of course let me know down below what would you do uh, with Jonathan David would you like the same at Newcastle United but do you think he'd come to Newcastle knowing he would be our second striker behind Alexander Isak so without further ado lads and lasses hope you've all enjoyed the video I've been Jordy Josh go and enjoy your day people <laughs>